This video is going to focus on the area of a circle. And before we start off with the area, I want to first remind you that a circle is defined as the set of all points that are equidistant from one center point. Now the distance from that center point to any part of the circle is referred to as the radius. The formula for the area of the circle is pi times the radius squared, with pi being 3.14 or 22 over 7. Either of those two values will give you a very good approximation for the value of pi. Now the majority of this video is simply going to be focusing on uh, different questions that involve the area of a circle. And so what we'll do is we will focus on the use of this formula. So now let's do an example. Let's determine the area of this circle in terms of pi and also round the answer to the nearest hundredth. These are the steps that you'll want to use whenever determining the area of any circle, or in fact of any polygon. First thing you want to do is you want to write the formula out. So there we are. Let's plug in our given values. In this particular case, we are given 6 being the radius. So what we're going to do is we're going to take 6 and plug it in right there that takes care of step two. Let's do a little bit of arithmetic now. Six squared is 36. So that's 36 pi. And by the way, if you're wondering why I didn't write pi 36, it's the same thing really. We just, we typically write the numbers out in front first. This would be the exact answer. And in, because of that, it's also written with the pi there. So this satisfies the requirement for A. Now for B, we're going to round to the nearest hundredth, and whenever you're rounding, what that means is simply this. You're going to take pi here, and then you're going to substitute the value for pi, which in this case, we'll, we'll use the decimal equivalent, 3.14. Therefore, if we do that, we get 36 times 3.14, multiply that, and we get 113.04. And that satisfies the requirement for part B. To reiterate, 36 pi is the exact answer. However, if you were to substitute 3.14 in for pi, you get 113.04, which is an approximation. Both answers are the same. Both answers are correct. OK, now let's try another. Deter the area of a circle is 36 pi. Determine the diameter. Recall that these are our steps. Step one is to write the formula. So there we are. Now this formula does not involve diameter, it involves radius. So let's figure out the radius first, and then we can worry about the diameter later. Step two is to plug in the given value, and what we're given in this case is the area. We're told that the area is 36 pi. So therefore, what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace that in for A, not for R. The R is the radius, we're not told that. So the area again, 36 pi, you'll replace that in here for A. So there we are. Now let's go ahead and solve for R. Since pi is being multiplied to R, let's go ahead and divide that out. This allows us to reduce out the pi's like this. And what we're left with is 36. Now that doesn't necessarily give us the answer for R, but rather for R squared. So since we just want R, we're gonna go ahead and square root both sides. So that leaves us with the square root of 36, which is 6. So now we have the radius. Since we're asked to determine the diameter, recall that the diameter is the distance from end point to end point in a circle, which essentially is the radius times 2. Therefore, 12 is the diameter, and that's our answer. All right, let's try another. Let's determine the area of this blue region and round the answer to the nearest hundredth. First of all, you should recognize what we're looking at. What we're looking at essentially is a square, the area of which is the base times the height, or any side squared. However, we're also given a circle here, so what we want to do is this. Let's get the area of this whole entire square. And since the circle here has been cut out, we'll get its area also and then just subtract those two. 
So the area of the circle being pi r squared, we're going to use that. And the area of the square being base times height, we'll use that too. OK, let's first focus on the square first. Notice that for the square, the height is 6. So we're going to plug that in right here. We also know this entire length. It's also 6 because it's a square. So that goes here. So therefore, for that part, you get 6 times 6. What about the circle? Well, for the circle, we're going to need to know the radius. Since this entire length here is 6, that also tells us that this entire length is 6. What that means is that since the whole thing is 6, the distance from the center to here is 3. So that's the radius. And what we'll do is we'll transplant 3 in for r. So here we go. Let's go ahead and do some arithmetic now. A is our only variable left, so in solving for the area, you get 6 times 6, which is 36. 3 squared is 9. And that would be the exact answer. However, since we're to round this to the nearest hundredth, what we're going to do is we're going to plug in for pi 3.14. Therefore, we get this. Multiply these together and you get 28.26. And if we do the subtraction, we get 7.74. So that's our round off and that's really it. Remember that the exact answer is when you just have pi in it. But as soon as you replace pi with 3.14, your answer is no longer exact. It's approximate. And that's what we wanted in this particular case anyhow, since we were to round the answer to the nearest hundredth. OK, let's try a third one here. In this particular case, you're given the circumference of a circle instead. Determine the area in terms of pi. Since you are given the circumference, we should start off with that circumference formula. Now, there are two formulas for circumference, one's for diameter and one's for radius. We're going to use the one for radius, and the reason for that is very easy to understand. Since you're asked to determine the area, the formula for the area involves the radius. So therefore, we're, we're really just stuck with this. We won't deal with the diameter. We want the radius anyhow. OK, so now that we've written the formula, let's go ahead and plug in what we're given. You are told the circumference is 16 pi. So what we're going to do is, since it's the circumference we're talking about, we're going to plug that in right there. All right, now let's solve for that last remaining variable there, which is r. Since 2 and pi are being multiplied to r, let's go ahead and divide those two out. And by the way, if you're thinking, why are we dividing and not subtracting? It's because they're being multiplied together, and the opposite of multiply is not subtract. So when we divide 2 and pi out, 2's reduce out, pi's reduce out on the right-hand side. On the left-hand side, the pi's reduce out. And what we are left with is 8. So now we can help, now that we have 8, we can use that to help us get the area. So let's start again, only this time with the area formula. To get the area, you need to know the radius. We accomplished that here. So let's go ahead and plug that in. And now we can do some simple arithmetic 8 squared. That's 64. So 64 pi is our solution. OK, let's try another. Determine the area of this figure here to the nearest hundredth. Let's break this up into a few pieces. We got these two half circles, one on the left and one on the right. If we were to put them together, what well, we would get is an entire circle. Therefore, we're going to need to know the area of the circle to help us out with this. The rest is that rectangle. If you were to take that rectangle and add it in, we would have the complete area. So adding these two together would be it. Now for the rectangle, the base is 14, which we already know, but the height is 16. It's not 8. The reason being is this. This distance here is the radius of the circle. And if you'll notice that it's drawn here, that just simply means that if it's drawn here being 8 units, going up this way is also 8 units. 
So if you go down, that's 8 units. And together, that makes 16. So that's the reason why the height of the left and the right is going to be 16. For the circle, as stated before, we know the radius is 8. So we're going to use that to help us figure out this problem. So let's go ahead and write down our formulas. That's for the rectangle. And then we're going to add in the entire circle there. Now, by the way, what if it was just one half? Like, what if this part here wasn't even there? Then what you would do is you would just simply have this over 2. But, since we have a complete circle, it's just going to be pi r squared. Now, now focusing on the rectangle first, the base is 14, and the height is 16, as we established here and over here. So we're going to plug those in. As far as the circle is concerned, the radius is 8. So right here, we'll write in 8. All right, let's go ahead and uh, clean this up. 14 multiplied to 16 gives us 224. 8 squared is 64. And that would be fine for an exact answer. We couldn't do anything with that, so a lot of times people will make the mistake of adding 224 to 64. And they'll write 288 pi. But this is not it. We can't do that. So just simply leaving them separate like this would be the answer if you were to write this in terms of pi or as an exact answer. However, since we're asked to round this to the nearest hundredth, we're going to have to replace 3.14 in for pi. Remember that doing so makes the answer an approximation. So if we do that, we're left with this. Multiply your 64 to 3.14 and then add the result to 224. And we are left with that result. And that's essentially it. Okay, let's try another. Determine the area of this blue region. Hopefully what you recognize is that you're looking at two circles here that are concentric, meaning that they have the same center. This shape, by the way, is referred to as an annulus, and the plural, I think, would be annuli. Anyways, to determine the area of this annulus, or donut-shaped, what you're going to need to do is this. Take the area of that large circle, and then subtract the area of the smaller circle. Now, since they're both circles, we're just simply using the same formula twice. So you have the big circle, which I'll refer to as pi times big R squared. And then you'll subtract the area of the smaller circle, which is pi little r squared. So big R for big circle, little r for little circle. And I'm distinguishing between the two. Let's go ahead and replace those values in. For big R, the radius is 9. And for little r, the radius is 4. So if you were to plug those in, this is what we get. Now 9 squared, we can do that quite easily, as we can with 4 squared. And that's uh, 81 pi and 16 pi. Now if, if you subtract those, what you get is 65 pi. And that's really it. At this point, you might be wondering about the 81 pi and the 16 pi. How is it that we can just simply go 81 minus 16 and get 65, and then just write the pi at the end? It's kind of like doing this problem. If you had 81x minus 16x, and your teacher was, was to tell you to collect like terms, you would simply take 81 and subtract the 16, and then you'd write 65x. Well, this is the same thing. The only difference is instead of x, it's pi. You can pretty much do this with just about anything. You can do this even with radicals. If they had the same radical, you would just simply add the numbers in front. I could use factoring also to illustrate this, but uh, I, I think that pretty much says it. So 65 pi is our solution. Okay, let's go ahead and do another. Determine the area of this particular annulus. What we're given here is the distance from here to here, which is 5, and then this little distance in between, which is 2. Let's go ahead and write the formula for this. That's going to be the big circle minus the small circle. And now let's go ahead and plug in our values. 
This one should be pretty easy. For the smaller circle, the radius is 5. So 5 is going to go there. But for big R, if you're thinking 2, keep in mind that it should be bigger than 5. So 2 wouldn't work here. It would be 7. And here's the reason for it. The distance from here to here is 5. Yes, we get that. But if you're going to draw the entire length there, it would be 5 and then 2, which together makes 7. So that's the radius of the entire large circle. Remember, the radius starts from the center and goes to the end. It doesn't start with some other point in between and then go to the end here. And you wouldn't just call that the radius. So the radius, remember, is always from the center. 7 squared is 49. And 5 squared is 25. And then 49 minus 25 is 24. And that is our solution. If you were going to write, by the way, the approximation for this, this would be your exact answer. And then for pi, you'd replace 3.14 and then multiply that decimal number to 24 to get your approximation. Okay, let's do one last one here. Let's solve for x, knowing the area of this in-between region. Since this in-between region is basically a big circle minus a small circle, Let's start off with the formulas for that. And there we have it. That's pi big R squared minus pi little r squared. Let's go ahead now and plug in our given values. We do know what A is. A is the area 36 pi. So we know 36 pi goes here. Big R refers to the radius of the big circle, which is x. And little r is the radius of the smaller circle, which is 8. So there we are. 8 squared, by the way, is 64, so let's go ahead and write that in. OK, now let's go ahead and solve this for our variable x. First thing you want to do is you want to get just this entire term by itself, since that contains the variable. Therefore, this 64 pi, we want to get rid of it. Since it is being minus, what we're going to do is we're going to add it to both sides, because that's the opposite of subtraction. So what happens is this. These cancel. Here, since these both have pi, they are like terms. So just simply adding the coefficients 36 and 64, what we get is 100. So that's 100 pi is equal to pi times x squared. Now that we've isolated this entire term, now let's worry about just the x squared. Let's get rid of the pi now. Since pi is being multiplied to x squared, we will divide both sides by pi, because that is the opposite of multiplication. This allows us to reduce these out. And that's on both sides. So what we get is just simply 100 is equal to x squared. OK, almost done. We want x, not x squared. So since we have 100 equals to x squared, let us square root both sides. The square root of 100 is 10. So 10 is equal to x. And that is all there is. That's it for this one. I'll see you next time.